everyone, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to Back to Space Month Rewind. We're going to be talking about March. Yeah, March. What a month. About a year since the pandemic. Still going strong, but you know what? It's fine. I'm vaccinated. We're good. Also, I got this back. I have my teleprompter. Guys, it is a new month, a new me. All right, so let's jump into it. On March 1st, Rocket Lab unveiled its plans to launch a big new rocket called Neutron by 2024. I really hope Jimmy Neutron was the inspiration behind this. This is big news because they originally said they were here to launch tiny little satellites exclusively on small boosters. So this is a pivot, pivot, pivot. This came as the company preps to go public after a merger with Vector Acquisition Corporation. Quote, there are some things we said we would never do, but we're, we're going to build a big rocket, Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck said. I also love this. He's like, yeah, I know we said we we're going to do one thing, but now we're doing something different. Also on March 1st, SpaceX aborted a launch less than 90 seconds from blastoff. The Falcon 9 carrying 60 Starlink satellites experienced an automatic abort. But SpaceX said overall the vehicle and payload are healthy and remain in good great health. SpaceX also said on March 1st that its second fully crewed astronaut flight crew 2 is prepared for launch and set to launch on April 20th. The mission will launch NASA astronauts Megan MacArthur and Shane Kimbrough, Akito Hoshid, and Thomas Pesquet. A Japanese billionaire is looking for eight crew members for a mission to the moon. This actually might sound familiar because he did do a competition titled Girlfriend Contest back in the day, but he got a lot of flack for it. So now he's looking for eight crew members to fly around the moon and back. You can check this out more on their website. It is called Dear Moon. NASA Perseverance rover landing successfully landed last month on February 18th, and on March 2nd, the wind sensor was deployed. Yay, we didn't get to talk about the Perseverance last month, so I'm happy to do it this month. The wind sensor is part of the Perseverance's weather station, which is called the Mars Environmental Dynamic Analyzer, META. This instrument will monitor air temp, humidity, radiation, dust, and wind at Perseverance's landing site. On March 3rd, SpaceX's Starship SN10 spacecraft touched down after a high altitude test flight, which was a major milestone for the company and its crewed Mars ambitions. But here's the kicker didn't manage to hold it together and exploded eight minutes after landing. This was the third high altitude test flight for the Starship vehicle, but the first to feature a successful landing. SN10's two immediate predecessors flew well, but then hit the ground hard and ended up in pieces. Some flames were visible near its base shortly after landing, and then it just kind of exploded. On March 4th, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launched 60 Starlink satellites into orbit and nailed the landing. Also on March 4th, President Joe Biden held a video call with scientists and engineers at NASA's JPL, which manages Perseverance's $2.7 billion mission. During the 10-minute chat, Biden gave his praise and thanks for acing the February 18th landing, stressing that it came at a crucial time for the nation. It's so much bigger than landing Perseverance on Mars. It's about the American spirit, and you brought it back. You brought it back in a moment we so desperately needed. Aw, that's sweet. Boeing's second uncrewed test flight of its Starliner spacecraft for NASA will not launch on April 2nd. On March 4th, NASA and Boeing jointly announced plans to push back the launch of the Starliner's Orbital Test Flight 2 mission. It was already delayed by two weeks, so let's get going. On March 5th, Perseverance took its first test drive on Mars. Our first drive went incredibly well. This is just the beginning. During the briefing, mission team members also announced that they are naming the Perseverance landing site in Yezero Crater, Octavia E. Butler Landing, after the famed science fiction author, the first science fiction author to receive the MacArthur Fellowship. On March 7th, the NASA Hubble Space Telescope took a little nap. I want to do that too. It went into a protective safe mode early that morning, but its handler seemed confident that it would bounce back in no time. The reason it went into the safe mode was due to an onboard software error. But then on March 12th, after spending about four and a half days in safe mode, the Hubble woke up and returned to conducting science operations. On March 9th, a meteor streaked through the night sky over Vermont, creating a spectacular light show and caused earth-shaking booms as it burned through the atmosphere. God, she really had to make 
make an entrance, huh? The meteor's explosive passage through the atmosphere released the equivalent of 400 pounds of TNT, suggesting that the meteor was likely 10 pounds, six inches. So this isn't something you hear every day. China and Russia agree to work together. What? Anywho, on March 9th, the leaders of China National Space Administration and Roscosmos signed a memorandum of understanding and construction of a moon outpost called the International Lunar Research Station, or since we love acronyms, ILRS. ILRS. The Chinese National Space Administration wrote in an announcement, quote, the ILRS is a comprehensive scientific experiment base with the capability of long-term autonomous operations built on the lunar surface and slash or in lunar orbit that will carry out multidisciplinary and multi-objective scientific research activities such as lunar exploration and utilization, lunar base observations, basic scientific experiments, and technical verification. Okay, well, Good luck with that. Speaking of China, the China National Space Administration released three new images, two in black and white and one in color on March 4th. The new images are of the spacecraft's first high definition photos of Mars from orbit, making them the sharpest images to date. Uh, CNSA, which is the China Space Administration, was kind of hush hush about the whole thing. The photographs mark a key stage of the mission. It's scouting out the surface of the southern region, the area in which China intends to land the rover portion of the Taiwan 1. Remember, the landing is scheduled for May or June, and the rover will spend three months working on its Martian surface using its six instruments. If the landing is successful, it will be the second to clock in for work on Mars this year, joining Perseverance. On March 11th, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carried 60 Starlink satellites into orbit before nailing its landing on a floating platform at sea. And they did the exact same thing on March 14th with a new batch of 60 satellites, and they did the same thing on March 27th. Going back to March 11th, the ISS discarded a 2.9 ton pallet of used batteries. This is the most massive object it has ever jettisoned. The space junk is expected to fall back to Earth in two to four years, but don't worry, it won't just randomly fall from the sky. <laughs> um, it will just burn up harmlessly in the atmosphere. Okay, that sounds nice. On March 12th, China's new Long March 7A rocket successfully launched its first orbital mission after its first attempt a year ago ended up with a failure. It went into orbit with a classified experiment satellite called Cheyenne 9, meaning Experiment 9. It will be mainly used for in-orbit tests of new technologies, including space environment monitoring. The Perseverance, let's check in with him. Okay, on March 13th, the rover dropped its belly pan. Can I also drop my belly pan? Is that an option? Looking for a friend. Okay, well the belly pan is a protective cover that sat over the sampling system. The pan drops directly off the rover and exposes the sampling system beneath. The car-sized rover will be storing samples in its belly, it'll be snacking just like me, as it explored the red planet, looking for any signs of ancient life. And speaking of the perseverance, it's been there for a month. Time flies in a pandemic on Mars. On March 18th, the core stage of the SLS, aka Space Launch System, the rocket that NASA is developing to take astronauts to the moon, Mars, and other distant destinations, fired up for a critical pre-flight test. The hot fire test ran for just under 500 seconds, a duration that NASA had planned and hoped for. The trial was a repeat of an identical test that occurred on January 16th, but that of course ended up much earlier than expected with the engine shutting down, you know, that whole thing in just over like a minute and after coming to life. NASA Acting Administrator Steve Jerzyk said, quote, what a great day and a great test. This is a major milestone advancing our goals for Artemis. I'm also speechless at how well things went today. Hell yeah, let's keep this thing blasting off. I don't even think that's a phrase. Also on March 18th, the other half of SpaceX's Starship Deep Space Transportation System was unveiled. Over the past three months, I've been talking to y'all about the Starship prototypes, but we haven't really talked about the Super Heavy, the 230 foot tall booster that will launch the Starship off Earth. Elon took to Twitter to show this up. Quote, first Super Heavy booster. What a caption, very to the point. It's happening, guys. President Joe Biden will nominate former Florida Senator Bill Nelson to lead NASA. In addition to a career spent representing the Space Coast in the federal government, Nelson's claim to space fame, 
Did that rhyme? It did. Is that before becoming a senator, he interrupted his career as an elected official to serve as a payload specialist on a six-day flight of the Space Shuttle Columbia in 1986. The next steps, the nomination will be considered by the Senate. If approved, he will replace the acting administrator. However, if he is confirmed, he intends on keeping the course to the moon. That's great. Some sad news, on March 19th, an engineer who was involved from the start of NASA's effort to launch the first astronaut into space and who led missions control through some of its most challenging and triumphant hours. Flight director Glenn S. Lunny died at the age of 84. By the way, he was also working on Apollo 13 and made sure that they were safe. So thank you for everything that you did. On March 23rd, Rocket Lab launched seven small satellites to Earth's orbit, including one of its own spacecrafts designed to pave the way for future missions to Venus and the Moon. It launched from its company's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. I also love that New Zealand is doing this because I've always wanted to go there for, you know, the Lord of the Rings whole world. But now that they're also launching things, it makes it I'm going on a tangent, I'm gonna stop. The US Space Force launched its first small rocket flight of 2021. They dumped a bit of water vapor into the Earth's upper atmosphere. The rocket was studying the process of ionization. This was the first Space Force small launch mission in 2021. A Russian Soyuz rocket sent 38 satellites into space, making a historic rideshare mission for the Russian company GK Launch Services. This was the first time the company sent a fully commercial space mission aloft with no main Russian government satellites on the ticket. This is fun. The NASA's Mars helicopter, Ingenuity, which is scheduled to lift off the red planet as soon as April 8th, bears a tiny swatch of fabric from the wing of Flyer 1, the plane that in December 1903 made the first power flight on Earth. What a beautiful way to pass the future with acknowledging the past. I love it. On March 24th, a Soyuz rocket successfully launched 36 OneWeb satellites into orbit. This was the fifth launch of OneWeb overall. The satellite constellation, still under construction, aims to offer access to internet in remote areas, including multiple internet protocols like 3G, LTE, 5G, and Wi-Fi. The wormhole moon was the first supermoon of the year and it looked beautiful. Take a look at that. This just in, Virgin Galactic now has a fleet. On March 30th, they unveiled its second piloted space plane, a shiny silver vehicle called VSS Imagine. Like Virgin Galactic's other spacecraft, USS Unity, VSS Imagine is designed to take people and scientific experiments to and from suborbital space. However, the newcomer is the first in the next generation Spaceship 3 line, which features upgrades that will, quote, enable improved performance in terms of maintenance, access, and flight rate. Look how cool this is. SpaceX's latest prototype SN11 took to the skies over Texas on March 30th, following a 24-hour delay. The rocket soared to an altitude of 6.2 miles before beginning the landing procedure. But at nearly six minutes into the flight, SpaceX broadcast cameras cut out. Quote, looks like we had another exciting test of Starship number 11, a launch commentator for SpaceX said during a broadcast. He continued by saying, the Starship 11 is not coming back. Do not wait for the landing. Looks like Engine 2 had issues on ascent and didn't reach operation chamber during landing burn. But in theory, it wasn't needed. Elon took to Twitter to say, something significant happens shortly after landing burn start. Should know what it is once we can examine the bits later today. My God, I can't read. Okay. Well, that is it for this month's Month Rewind. I'm super excited about everything that is happening and I'm very much looking forward to next month, guys. Get used to it, get used to the backdrop, because we are back, baby! Thanks everyone so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you guys next month. Thanks everyone, make sure you like, subscribe, send it to your ex-boyfriend. Okay.